On the show today, we'll discuss issues around Nigeria's new 10-year passport and other ongoing reforms at the Nigeria Immigration Service. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market, and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awone. Now, a lot of discussions have been making around about the cost of Nigeria's new 10-year passport. Mohamed Babande, the Controller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service, is, joins us today to help us understand what the issues are. Thank you so much, sir, for taking the time out to join us today. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Let's start with the, the new international passport. Uh, we understand that registration and the issuance, uh, the registration at least, uh, has been ongoing. Help us understand what is on offer by the, or from the Nigeria Immigration Service, the new 10-year passport, and how Nigerians, the average Ni well, those who are interested, can go about acquiring it. Uh, in last year, we had a conference. Uh, immigration officers had a conference, and we found it necessary to review the document itself. It means the physical passport and the process of getting passport. Uh, if Nigerians can remember very well, the e-passport, which was introduced 2007, was also ICAO compliance. But from 2007 to 2018, it's a long time, over 10 years. Technology has changed. Criminal networks have also improved their tactics in tackling a document. So we felt it is necessary to do a review and upgrade the passport and also answer the yearning of Nigerians. Majority of Nigerians in diaspora have tabled issues even before the National Assembly about five-year validity. They feel it is small time. When you have five-year passport, uh, some of them are staying in a place far away from where Nigerian missions is available. Uh, so if you give them five years, it expires, they begin to look for Nigerian missions in other places, which is a problem. So we did it to address, first, the issue of fraud. Secondly, to answer the yearning of Nigerians to ensure that they don't come back to us regularly. It even reduces workforce for us and work time. Uh, this is a dream. What is new in the new passport are the issues Nigerians need to know. First, it is 10 years, but there is option. I keep telling people that I saw a write of somebody said, why should we charge 70,000 for a 10 year passport? I said, look, there is option. You can get five years passport validity for 35,000, which is okay if you don't want 10 years. But just in diaspora, I would like to have those 10 years passport instead of them to travel a long way from another country to another country. It's, there were time when people traveled all the way back from as far as uh, Iceland to come and renew their passport. You can imagine the burden of the money involved. So we have done that in order to reduce burden on Nigerians. Secondly, we also introduced the process to be reduced so that things would be much easier. Uh, you match payment with uh, issuance. You reduce cash flow in the system so that you tackle corruption. Uh, you also make it easier for the people to get. But let me tell you, the futures in this passport are great. Uh, it is a kind of improved. Uh, it is also a document that we should be proud of because it's not a document for us alone as a country. It's a document to be used by all border officers in the world. And they see a lot of problems uh, with the Nigerian passport. The 2007 passport is still valid. It is still a car compliance, but not up to that level. I'm telling you, a lot of officers, our colleagues at the border globally, would be happy to see an improved passport. Okay, Mr. Babangi Dede, if I could just come in here. For those who cannot afford to pay the 70000 now for the 10-year validity passport, for those who want to opt for the 5-year validity passport, does it still contain the same features as the 10-year validity passport? It's the same passport. Okay. It's the same passport, only the number of... Uh, even if there is a menu for them for number of pages. Or for example, you can have... 10 years passport validity with less pages. You can have five years passport with bigger pages because we have smaller 34 pages, we have 66 pages. But this option is only for adults. If you are a child below the age of 18, you cannot get 10 years passport because your futures will change that time. So we allow only the option of 10 years for adult. And I think the advantage of this is that uh, nobody will say we have pushed him to buy a passport that is 10 years, uh, even if he doesn't need it. I'm telling you, there are some businessmen who travel so frequent. I don't want to give you names. Businessmen, clergymen, who travel so frequently that they prepare to have the five years passport with, with 66 pages. You know why? Because if they have the 10 years passport, they'll keep changing it. So why don't I take five years? with bigger pages because I can finish the passport in 
one year or two years. So the options are there for everybody. Okay, can I just come in here? So are you saying that for this 10-year validity passport at 70,000 Naira, it just, all the features justify the, the amount that this all, passport goes for? Okay, let me tell you why it can be good like that. First, you have, instead of five years, you have 10 years. But all the security features we have in the passport is one. We have three passports we roll out. Remember, we took Mr. President. He was the first person who launched the passport. Uh, and we took him with his national identity number. We took the vice president and produced a password with the national identity number. The passport given to Mr. President and the vice president are diplomatic passport. Diplomatic passport and official passport cannot be for 10 years. We allow it only for five years validity. You can see those officials like me, uh, those diplomats who are serving our missions cannot have the option of 10 years because we know the lifespan of public servant or senators, political appointees will not be more than four years. So that is limited. But it is the ordinary passport, the standard passport that has options for 10 years. If you like, you cannot afford it, take five years and have 35 thousand naira is enough for you okay the now, the immigration service has been encouraging nigerians to go uh, apply for the new passport online and uh people have been doing so and some of the uh what we've heard so far is uh the amount especially for the five-year validity passports uh, with 62 uh, leaflets that on the website on the nis website goes for twenty-two thousand. 500 naira. So I just wanted to, to, to clear this up. Those who pay 22,500 naira for the five year new passport, are they going to get 32 uh, pages or 60, 64 booklet? No, I think we don't need to compute the current, we have rolled out with the Mr. President, uh, the new passport. And we have sent to our diplomatic missions in Nigeria, we have sent it to ICAO uh, as a new document. We'll start rolling out this passport first match to every Nigerian. What is available is the old passport that was rolled out 2007. And let Nigerians know that they don't need to rush for the new passport. The old passport will work together. That's what happened in every part of the world. When you roll out the new passport, you allow the old one to continue until it expires so that there will be no pressure on individual. So what you see on the website you, you is the price of the old passport. And the new passport price is available, but you cannot be able to assess it until first uh, uh, week of March when it will be rolled well, if out. I, if I could just come in here, because I asked you that question because some people who are applying for this passport now, who are paying 22,500 naira, are under the impression that they are paying for the new passport. That's why I asked you that question. So, no, are you we made, saying that we made, we made it very clear. Uh -uh. We made it very clear that it will start on the first March. And the prizes have been made to the public. So if you assess any payment on our website, it is for the old passport you are paying. And you can still be given based on those 64 pages. This old passport also has 64 pages. What it doesn't have is 10-year validity. Okay. And the old passports, uh, if, for those who are going to acquire the new passport while still holding on to the old passport, can they use both simultaneously? What happens to the old passport? No. And, and any time... You can continue using your old passport until it expires. But any time you come to the immigration, when we launch it from 1st March, you are issued a new passport, the old one is deactivated. It will be cancelled and returned to you without prejudice. Even if you have a visa inside the passport, you may have 10 years visa validity in the passport. That visa is still valid for entry anywhere you want because you will be allowed to attach it with a new passport. That is better. But if you are not willing to change, you can continue using your old passport, it expires. Once it expires, after we launch it, you have to get new one. So we don't want Nigerians to put under pressure. Some, some have renewed their passport today. Okay, so they have got a new passport the today. The new passport is, is, not, it. Is, it, is it going to be mandatory? Is there going to come uh, a time no, when no, it will no, be no. phased out? The old one will be phased out? Yes, it, it will be phased out automatically. What I'm saying, it will be phased out automatically. Okay. Uh, we don't want to put the pressure. We did that mistake when we launched the 2007 passport where we gave a timeline of pacing out the passport and many Nigerians became stranded abroad in places where there are no mission. We'll allow these two passports to work simultaneously. Okay. But anybody whose passport has expired uh, when we started the launch, he will get the old passport. All the right. new passport. But on your own, if you want to get a new passport, you can get a new passport, even if it has not expired. We cancel and return it to you. 
Okay, let's move on to other issues. Now, let's move on to uh, immigration control. Now, the NIS recently said that it's, it's going to uh, commence the registration of immigrants and expatriates uh, in the country. Can you tell us exactly when this is scheduled to begin? Yes, we, Mr. President has given a go-ahead, but this is within our act uh, that every person who enters our territory and stays for a period exceeding 90 days that person is mandated to register with the immigration service. The liability to register is not only with the migrant, but it's also with the person who provided the accommodation. That's why he's expected to register in a state that person reside. If you are staying in a hotel, the hotelier has a responsibility to find out if you stay for more than 90 days to ensure that person registered, because you'll be liable for not uh, doing that. Uh, accommodate for uh, residence given to uh, migrant. So any uh, rent, to be given to migrant, you must make sure that that person is registered with Nigeria, at Nigerian immigration service, otherwise will be liable. So we want to roll out this in the next two months, uh, God's willing. Every Nigerian will be well educated to contribute to this. We'll work with the traditional rulers, with the governors, to make sure non-Nigerians are well documented by military when they're in our territory. What can you tell us about the level of monitoring and the usual cases that you, you stumble upon or you discover? Uh, I think I did an assessment last year. Uh, every December we did we do assessment of our work. And I realized that the monitoring is not as effective as I want it to be. Uh, we want to know every non-Nigerian who is in our territory, what that person is doing. Uh, when we intensified monitoring last year, we found a lot of people who have arrived with visa on arrival. And visa arrival is made for businessmen. And they took up employment. Uh, the Honorable Minister of Interior, Interior graciously approved the deportation of these people. So uh, there are a lot of expatriates who are here on business visit and they're taking up employment, which is strictly prohibited and subject to deportation. So I assure you, this registration will increase our monetary level. You came to Nigeria to visit and do business for two weeks, ten, uh, two, ten days, and we found you after 90 days you are registered or you are leaving the country you without registering. You pay penalty for that. So it is very important for us to intensify our monitoring, and this tool will strengthen that monitoring. We're discussing the issues around Nigeria's new 10-year passport and other ongoing reforms by the Nigeria Immigration Service. Still with me is Mohamed Babandede, Controller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service. Thank you, sir, for your time uh, so far. Let's Thank continue you. from where we picked up, uh, we left off. We're talking about uh, immigration control. You've said that some uh, people have come into the foreigners have come into the country with a visa on arrival and have overstayed. And you talked about penalties. Now we know that uh, for several decades now. Uh, and because we do not have a central uh, database where uh, I mean, we have the information of Nigerians and perhaps you know, even foreigners, many have slipped in and have been working and living here. What is the NIS going to do uh, for those who are not willing to come forward to be identified and to be registered? What are the plans by the NIS? Well, first, let me say visa arrival is good. Let not uh, people feel like uh, it's a very bad thing. It contributes to our economy. Uh, it contributes to the ease of doing business, which is uh, great for Nigeria. Remember, Nigeria has been named by World Bank as one of the 10 most reformed countries in the ease of doing business. It means we are changing a great deal. So visa on arrival is good, but it is our responsibility as a service to ensure that anybody who enters our territory comes and do the right thing, not contrary to the agreement signed. What can we do about it? The penalties are very clear. Anybody who overstays says a penalty, a fees. Additional penalty, we can refuse you to return back to this country for a period of uh, two, three years, as the minister may so determine of interior. Uh, but what, what do we do to ensure these people comply in terms of technology? Uh, we cannot physically monitor people to be going to uh, hotels as we have been doing. Uh, I'm glad to say Mr. President approved in council last year for the building of technology building. This technology building will be the hub of all our control mechanism. Our visa, people passing through our borders, our passports, people who are registering uh, and where they are staying. So there will be an interactive technology building which will provide support for law enforcement, which will give data analysis and uh, prediction, uh, which will give threat assessment uh, of and contribution of migrant to our development. I think this is going to change the pattern of how migration is managed in Nigeria and we hope this building will be completed this year.
Are you going to be reaching out to undocumented uh, immigrants uh, in the country to come forward to be registered? Yeah, I'm, just sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure uh, there will be some concession for them. I don't want to mention it now. Uh, but I know Mr. President is willing and has given certain concession. Uh, let the time come for the registration uh, where those undocumented migrants could have ability to register without fear. And that is a uh, great incentive done by other part of the world. Uh, I assure you, uh, this strategy is on ground. We must give it a chance that you have the opportunity, even though you have stayed irregularly, when the registration comes, we should give you the opportunity to register without fear. That strategy is already on ground. Okay, let's quickly talk about the visa on arrival. Obviously, that's, it's, it's been a very good policy uh, by, the, uh, by the, this current administration working in hand with the NIS. Uh, but tell us uh, how this, the process has progressed so far. One, two, the challenges that you've been encountering and what you've been doing to surmount them. Uh, before this administration, visa on arrival was done manually. Uh, companies that have big business partners who wants to come into this country, but they are not in the country where they reside or their nationals. Remember, visas are issued to individuals, not only by Nigeria, but every country, to people who are resident of that country or they are nationals of that country. Uh, if you are a Nigerian, you want to get a visa when you go on a journey to US, you cannot go to Germany and begin to ask German embassy to give you a visa because you are a visitor in the US. But if you are in Nigeria residing in the U.S., you could be given a visa. So this category of great businessmen who don't stay, we have some of them around in our country. Uh, let me give you an example, like the Dangotes, uh, Otedola, or great preachers uh, who go around the world to preach, uh, or celebrities. Uh, they, they, they are traveling a lot. So we look at the situation and say, look, you cannot be a great businessman from U.S., and you are in China, you want to visit Nigeria, you will tell you to go back to U.S. to get a visa. So this visa on arrival was, that is a concept to improve business climate. Initially, people come physically to our office, bring the application. Uh, the government said, no, let's liberalize the situation. So we made it email based on arrival at nigerianimmigration.gov.ng. They send an email, we return the approval to them. Uh, this year, the directive is very clear with the government. Let it be interactive. They don't need to send email. They can fill the form online, process it, get the approval online without sending an email, which means an individual person can apply for visa on arrival. That's not necessarily the company. It's a good thing because it contributed to ease of doing business in Nigeria. Remember, a committee headed by a ministerial committee established by Mr. President, which is headed by his vice president, has considered ease of doing business goal objective in the entry and exit of person. And this year, last year, Nigerian Immigration won an award in the airport as a company that listened and complied to mobility of persons. So this year, we want to make it more web-based so that people can enter and apply and pay without headache. Uh, this is great because it will reduce the bureaucracy of payment. It will reduce the burden of people waiting. It's a good thing, but every good thing has a problem. <laughs> One of the problems is that uh, businessmen and agents, we have caught a lot of agents who apply for visa and drive on online for other people and collect money, including officers. We have an yeah. officer who is going to uh, uh, disciplinary measures where he posed as a, uh, as a company, applied visa on Arab somebody and collected money, and he's facing a disciplinary matters. There are some companies who apply for visa on Arab for other companies and charge money, which we don't charge, because the process of visa on Arab is free. It is a visa fee that you must pay. So, but some people are adding money to it. Not only that, some people who want to take up employment seek the opportunity for visa arrival because it's easy to come and apply for visa and arrival to do business only to take up employment, uh, including many other people. Even if you want to do small work to repair uh, uh, a, a machine that was bought from your company, you apply for visa and arrival as a businessman. Or journalists, instead of you to come and do journalism officially, ask the process, you say you are coming to do business discussion. We have got all this category of people. Uh, the Honourable Minister has deported all this category of people for violation. But what are we going to do to do it better? This year, we are going to follow every individual. Nigerians should not be surprised that we want to know every migrant who comes on visa on arrival will make sure he's there doing the business discussion, not taking up employment or doing other jobs that will be detrimental to our country and to our national security.
Okay, let's move on now to back to the uh, uh, immigration control, this time human trafficking. Now, obviously, you're familiar with the story uh, about, uh, about 20,000 women and girls that may have been trafficked uh, to Mali. Help us understand, because and, and I know that the NIS, NIS has often in the past said that Nigeria's porous borders, 140 of them, uh, is the biggest challenge for the NIS. But help us understand how you are approaching the issue of human trafficking, who you're working with, perhaps state governments, to help curb this trend. Uh, first, I would like the media to blow uh, international trafficking bigger than national trafficking. Uh, I don't want the West to provide that leadership of believing that uh, those who are trafficked are only those who reach Europe or are on their way reaching Europe. So it, you see this trafficking as a threat only to Europe. Uh, that is true, but not all truth. The truth of the matter is that internal trafficking is much larger than the external trafficking. A lot of girls are trafficked from villages into the cities and exploited in many forms. Uh, we don't look at that. So I like the media to concentrate heavily on this. Although the threat to transnational uh, trafficking is higher, uh, like Mali, uh, for Nigeria, we have realized, Nigeria Immigration Service in particular, that our border is beyond what you see as our physical border. Uh, you ask Nigeria, where is our border? They say, our oh, border was in Niger, border with uh, Benin. But d due to the agreement we have with the ECOWAS, our borders are in the ECOWAS region. That's the truth about it. Uh, we are members of another citizenship. We are citizens of ECOWAS in addition to our citizenship of being Nigerian. So those who moved, because the real threat and the documentation is moving northward toward the Sahara, getting toward the Europe, and Mali is on that route. Uh, people believe that uh, uh, living in Nigeria is very easy. Yes, it has to be easy because of the ECOWAS system. The ECOWAS systems allow any man, woman, who has a travel document, does not need a visa, you can enter Niger. So our border is in Niger, or our border is in Mali. Uh, our duty is that we need to work together, members of the course. That's why in 2017, we called for a meeting of head of immigration in Abuja, uh, where we discuss how we are going to cooperate together. And I'd like to thank Niger in particular. There has been great improvement of interception with our officers, especially in Katsana. We have many cases in court ongoing, and we have many cases we have intercepted and given to uh, National Agency for the Provision of Traffic in Person, NAPTIP. Uh, so we, we are prosecuting smuggling, uh, smuggling of migrant. NAPTIP is prosecuting trafficking in person. And smuggling of migrant and trafficking, they are very close professionally. Smuggling means you take somebody to another country which who doesn't have that adequate papers to enter. But trafficking has to do with the exploitation. Uh, so we work together with the NAPTIP to make sure that uh, Nigeria remains safe, but we should look at it at a global and a regional level. What about the borders? I mean, is that still a big issue for you? And like I mentioned, one forty it's, it's, of them, <laughs> and they're very porous. And it's, if you say it's, it's your it's biggest a big challenge, obviously it's impacting on your ability to effectively carry out uh, some of your mandates. It's, it's a big border, uh, uh, an open border, a vast border, especially the northern border. Uh, it's very vast and open. What are we doing to face that challenge? Uh, as I say in old ways, I'm not one of those who recommend the building of the wall. <laughs> Some people said the border is wide, so we should build walls. I am not a party to building of the wall. That will cut integration of the sub-region. But as a law enforcement, we need to allow mobility without sacrificing security. So what we are doing is, first, we have introduced the technology building, which means we can be able to patrol our borders technologically. I don't want to give you how much we have done. We have a pilot case. All 140 going of, one them? of the borders. When you say borders, yes. are you talking about Techno all? Okay. All the borders? Yes, techno technology is easier to handle than uh, human uh, mobility. What we have done, we have a pilot case in one of the borders where we can see what is happening in real time online. And if it is bigger than us, we can tell uh, other law enforcement. Uh, the Minister of Interior is driving a project called the e-border. Uh, the e-border will provide a technology sol solution where we can see what is happening in real time online. We can respond to it through with a bike, with our uh, patrol vehicles, or invite the military where it is a huge problem. This is already ongoing. Uh, I'm glad Mr. President has committed a lot of money on ground patrol. We have trained border patrol guards, border patrol officers. We have motor pat patrol vehicles. Motorbike for patrol is ongoing. But what we have done more beautiful, 
uh, last year, and we'll repeat it this year because Mr. President has approved budget for that, is the issue of forward border patrol base. We thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate all that you've helped us uh, to better understand today. I've been speaking to Mohamed Babandi, the Controller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service, looking at the ten new 10-year passport and other ongoing reforms at the Nigeria Immigration Service. With that, our show for today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Remember, you can watch all previous episodes of the show on our website. That's cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Market and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awoni. For myself and the team, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.